I know. You didn't fully believe me when I told you that your ear canal is going to increase the magnitude, the amplitude of a sound wave. Um, and now I'm going to show it to you. And, and what I'm going to show you is essentially how Rinne's test works. R-I-N-N-E, Rinne's test. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Now, do you hear that? Not really. And now, do you hear that? Okay. Let's do that again. Okay, pretty, pretty mild. And now it's louder. Okay. That is, the, I mean, I'm just using this as a tube, and you've got a great tube right here. So how do you, how do you use this tube to, to test for uh, hearing? You use it like this. You, you bang your, uh, your tuning fork. Okay, I can hear that. Now you're going to put it on the mastoid, and I'm going to hear it through bone conduction until I stop hearing it through bone conduction. And now when I put it in front of my ear, I should still hear it, okay? Because it's, it's, it's not enough to get by bone conduction, but if I have that amplification that takes place through the ear canal, um, I do hear it. So it should be louder here than on, on the bone. Uh, that's Rennie's test. And what that's going to tell you is, yes, there is a conduction deficit, or no, there is not a conduction deficit, okay? If, if they can hear this and they can't hear that, then there's a conduction deficit. Remember that we have these two steps, conduct, conduction and then sensory neural processing. When I, when I put that toning, tuning fork, fork on the mastoid, it, goes, it bypasses the conduction step, goes directly to the cochlea. My sensory neural processing hears it, and that's fine. And when I put it in front of the ear, there's air, it's going traveling through the air, now it's getting amplified by the external ear, and now I'm hearing it uh, um, louder because uh, it, it, in that case. So if you hear it louder here than here, if you can still hear it here after you've stopped hearing it here, that's the, a typical way to do this, um, then it's normal, okay? Conduction should be louder than, um, than bone conducted. Air conducted sounds should be louder than bone conducted sounds. And you can do that on both ears. And that's gonna tell you whether conduction in the right and conduction on the left is working or not. Okay, now, armed with that information, we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna now do Weber's test. And Weber's test is different. It's this. I'm putting it up on the ver vertex of the head and I'm asking which side is louder. Okay, so let's go to the board to try and understand what is happening here. So I have a, a vibrating tuning fork up at the top middle of the head. It is traveling, it's sending waves through the bone on both sides. And so the, the, the stimulus on both sides is the same. So the person, you should, you, when you ask the person which side is louder, they should say, it's, it's the same loudness on both sides, okay? It's the same. Um, now, let's say that they say, no, it's louder on one side. Well, how, do we, how, how could we get to the, to the sound being louder on one side? There are two ways. The first way, uh, well, let's just remind ourselves of Weber's law. There is a, it is no mistake that this Weber's test uh, harkens back to Weber's law. So the change in perception, the magnitude of the sound, is equal to a constant times the natural log of the, the stimulus, the change in, in sound, over the background sound, okay? So in order for the, this to be, if this is gonna be decreased, then this value is gonna decrease. How can this value decrease? It can decrease in one of two ways. It can decrease because uh, the numerator goes down or because the, uh, the denominator goes up. How would the numerator go down? Well, the only thing that would change how, how loud this is is if there's a deficit in sensory neural processing. 
So this is traveling through bone. It's going to end up going into the cochlea. And if the cochlea is, is not working well, then delta S, the stimulus, will be less. It'll have less of an effect. And so if the person says that it's louder, let's say the person says that it's louder over here, louder over here, one explanation is that you've lost sensory neural processing on the other side, okay? Now, what's the other explanation? Well, in fact, uh, background noise doesn't go up. The contralateral one goes down. So, so let's now say that um, the, uh, the um, background noise the background noise coming into the two ears is the same, but now we have a conductive failure here. So there's no conduction here. That means that, that the change in the stimulus is the same. So in this situation, sensory neural processing is normal, but there's no conduction. So this stays the same, but this goes down. If this goes down, then this becomes louder, okay? So, if this is loud, if it's louder on this side, that can be explained either by a loss of sensory neural processing on the contralateral side or a loss of conduction on the ipsilateral side. So, if I, if, if S naught, the background activity, is blocked, then this value of delta S over a, a S naught that is way, way down, that's now going to be very loud. All right? And that's just, it's summarized here. If you have a conductive loss, that's due to a, um, a decrease in the background activity that, uh, that, that is going to um, make this, uh, this go up. Um, so this is ipsilateral to the loud, louder side. And in the sensory neural, it's contralateral. Let's go over to the um, slides for a moment. This shows you the setup, and this shows you the logic. And you can go over this um, in, on your own time. Um, so one last thing. How do you, or two last things, how do you tell between whether it's a sensory neural loss on one side or a conductive loss on the other side? You, you have no, you know, Weber's, Weber's law is, is agnostic as to which of those two is producing an asymmetry in the, um, in the loudness. So how would, you do, how would you tell? Well, what do you do? Well, you do Rini's test and you figure out whether you have a conductive loss. So if you have a conductive loss on one side, then that explains the Weber's ex example. If, you have, if conduction is fine on both sides, then you have a sensory neural loss. Okay, that's one point. The second point is if there's a symmetric loss, typically in the sensory neural processing, then Weber's law is not going to be diagnostic. So in, in general, if these, if these tests come out um, without any definitive conclusion, if there's a symmetric loss, uh, but typically the person who's involved has been told by the people that they're, or the, their family, their friends, that they're um, not hearing well, that's probably true, and they need to be sent for further testing, so an audiogram, speech and noise type testing. Okay, so that tells you how to use Rini's and Weber's tests. Very important um, to be able to understand how those work in testing uh, hearing. <laughs>